it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a super fun video where I take all of my five star reads from January of this year until September. The ones that I rated five stars and I'm going to revisit those ratings and see if these books really are five stars. So for me it may be hard to tell like how I rate books because I don't really write them based on like literary merit per se. Um, I'm a very like personal rating and reviewer. I base a lot of my thoughts and my feelings if I enjoyed the book and if it included things that I liked. So you definitely know that if you watch like my wrap ups and stuff like that. But one thing I was trying to be really conscious of this year is being a little bit more selective, we'll say, with my five star reads. And I started looking at the five star reads that I had and I was like, I have quite a bit are they really five stars or was I just feeling generous at the time? And like probably most of you, when I finish a book, my feelings are very much attached to the reading experience right that moment. But do those feelings continue a month, two months, three months, six months later? So today we're here to look at all of my five star reads from January through September and decide are these five stars really five star books. So and I do plan to change my actual rating if my thoughts and feelings changed. So let's go ahead in no particular order and dive into the books. The first one is All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. This was the first book that I read in 2021. I usually do pick a book that I love to reread as my first book in a new year, just so I know I'm starting the year off right. And yes, this is 100% a five star book. It's a very personal book to me. It draws a lot of emotion from me and I never see this being anything less than five stars. So this one is staying in the five star category. Next up is Act Your Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. I really did enjoy this romance story about a woman that really can never settle down and find her footing but she ends up working at this bed and breakfast and there is a romance between the bed and breakfast owner and Eve. Um, however, this was my least favorite of the trilogy and I made that very clear in my wrap up. So why I still rated it five stars, I'm not really sure. There were some super adorable scenes, but this one is definitely getting bumped down to four stars. Float Plan by Trish Dollar. This is one that I raved about. I love this one. There is like one tiny thing that really kind of bothered me. It had that formulaic romance thing where there's that conflict. This shouldn't really be a conflict, but you know what's going to happen. But the discussions of grief and how the male protagonist in this just allowed our character to find herself, go at her own pace. Everything was so lovely. He just really took his time with her and she took her time with herself and they were traveling on the sailboat and it was just it was great so this is definitely still a five star read. Next up is Swing It Sunny by Jennifer and Matthew Holm and I absolutely adore this graphic novel series however I think I am a little generous at times and just because I enjoy it so much but if I look at the plot and the pacing and the overall like vibe of the book that's what I go with. And I do love the art style. It's super humorous. It's great. I do think these tell a full story. However, I do think that sometimes there's little plot holes here and there. So I'm going to go ahead and bump this down to four stars. Next one is The Romantic Pack by Megan Quinn and this is a book I received from Hello Lovely Box in one of their curated boxes that they do and I had never read anything by Megan Quinn before and I love this book so much. I know it may not look like it but if you're looking for a holiday romance story I would highly recommend this one. Loved this one. It was emotional. It was Oh, it was so good. It will go down as one of my like favorite books of all time. So I mean, I remember what I was wearing when I read this book and I did a whole vlog of it, even though for some reason you guys didn't watch that vlog a lot. That's fine. I really loved the book and it's staying at a five star rating. 
Right. Just like I was saying with Swing It Sunny, I read a comic. Um, this is the Beast Boy, the Teen Titans Beast Boy edition, and I love these so much. But I did find the beginning like a little slow. Um, but I mean, the story came together. The representation was really well. It did tell a complete story. The artwork is freaking fantastic. I definitely plan on continuing in the series, but I think just because the beginning was a little slow. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with four stars for this one. So I'm gonna bump it down. The next one is Eleanor and Gray by Brittany C. Cherry. I read this during Romance-a-thon and I vlogged that experience and I cried my eyes out reading it. Um, this one was like super emotional and it just, right from the start, it was just so well written, so, oh, I don't even know how to explain this book to you guys. If you haven't read it, highly recommend. This is staying a five-star read. Any book that can pull that emotion out of me like that is pretty much going to be a five-star read. All right, now we're getting into some heavy hitters that I like totally loved. Um, the first one is Every Vow You Break by Peter Swanson. And I know a lot of you guys did not like this and you were like three stars and below, but I loved this. The twist and turns, absolutely loved it. But to be completely honest, the ending part, there was just something at the ending that after the main wham, bam, thank you, ma'am happened, I didn't really like love and I was just kind of like, okay, whatever, I guess he had to end the story some kind of way. Um, and the details aren't really sticking with me. I know I read this pretty early on, like when it released, I did a release day vlog for this one. So if you wanna check that out, definitely check it out. But over time, it's just kind of faded into the background a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and lower my rating on this one to four stars. All right, next up is Survive the Night by Riley Sager. And I know you guys think that I'm going to give every single Riley Sager book five stars. That's just not true. There's some already published that I have rated less than five stars. But this one was just awesome. I also had an awesome reading experience. I did a release night vlog for this because the day that it released, I didn't get it until much later in the day. And I was very busy that day. But at night, I stayed up and I read this book. And it was just, it was so cool. Um, I really, really did enjoy it. And for people that aren't enjoying it, I guess they're just getting frustrated at our main character, Charlie, which I totally understand. But I like unlikable, stupid characters. I'm more about like, I think those people are the more character driven readers. And I'm more of a plot driven reader. And I think that's why this one just totally worked for me. So I'm still keeping it at five stars. And next up is Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. Guys, I cannot tell you how much I loved this book. Book. Seemingly on the surface, it probably wouldn't be a book that I would love, but I picked it up from Book of the Month. Riley Sager had recommended it. I read it for that five summer thrillers that Riley Sager recommended. And thank goodness I did that video because this probably would have been sitting on my shelf still. This book reads like an action movie, you guys. This has the pacing of No Exit by Taylor Adams. It's just like go, 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 go. It has more like grim, gruesome, gory details than you would probably imagine. It is just so good, so action-packed. The two dads are just one of my favorite like duos ever. And yeah, I just, oh, I love this book, you guys. It's staying at five stars. Next up is They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. And I absolutely loved this one. It is about a female serial killer um, working on a college campus and taking out people that have done wrong things. Um, the writing of this one was excellent. The pacing of this one was excellent. I do wish, I really do wish that there would have been more killing going on, but just the way that the story is told is so good and so clever that I just can't not rate this five stars. Next up is a book that you all hate, but I loved it with my whole heart. And that is Believe Me by J.P. Delaney. This is my favorite J.P. Delaney book. And a lot of people that have read this book, read his other books, said that this is like his weakest book. This is his debut. Uh, but it was so entertaining to me. I could not put it down. The audiobook was excellent. It had like background noises and stuff. I just like ambiance noises, you know. I loved this one 
so much and it will remain a five stars forever. The next book I want to chat with you guys about is The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave and I am so happy that I picked this up from Book of the Month. I hadn't heard anything about it but it was like their mystery thriller selection. Picked it up, read it, I devoured it. I remember loving it and I've at the end of reading it, I was like, man, that was so kind of not my typical like five star read, but I'm giving it five stars because it was just so well crafted. I loved the story of like the mother, well, the lady, the new mother and her stepdaughter and just finding out what happened to the guy that like left the note and disappeared and them trying to find him and just everything. But unfortunately, I have just lost a lot of the details of this one. It's not sticking out in my mind so much. So I am going to bump this down to four stars, but it is one that I want to keep and I want to read read to remind myself of some of those details and remind myself why I loved this one so much. But for now, it's getting bumped down to four stars. The next book is one that I read in January or February, and it is Since We Fell by Dennis Lehan. Guys, I picked this up at the book exchange. It was published in May of 2017, and I picked it up at the book exchange probably like maybe a year or two ago. Guys, this has been sitting on my shelf unread, and this book, I, I didn't even know what to expect going into this one. It was crazy in the best way possible. This is another one kind of like They Never Learn where the writing is just so clever. This one, it does start off a little slow, but interesting. Like it's not boring slow. It's just detailed, interesting, I don't know how else to explain it, but the beginning, it's, this book starts one way and then somewhere along the way, without even you realizing that it's happening, the story totally switches and something else ends up happening and it goes in this like totally different direction. And I was just mind blown. I was like mind blown when I read this. So this is definitely a five star read. I would be surprised if you don't see this at the end of the year on my best books of the year list. Um, it was just that freaking good. Five stars for that one. And the last book uh, from January through September um, that I have on my five star list is The Push by Ashley Aldrain. And you guys know that I absolutely love this book. I do talk about it as often as I can because to me it was the first book of its type or kind that I read. And I think that's probably why I loved it as much as I did. Also as a woman that deals with infertility, um, I think that also made it kind of special for me. Um, it was a very subtle story. The plot was definitely there, but it was really kind of focused on like motherhood and children. And yeah, it's just about this mother that is not connecting with her daughter and she doesn't understand why. And she's trying to explain it to the people around her, her husband, her mother-in-law, her therapist or doctors and stuff like that. And no one's really like, they're kind of like, oh yeah, you know, maybe, maybe we just have a little bit of postpartum depression. And it's like, no, it's probably a little bit something else, but I don't know. So I really loved this, but I know other people that have read books similar to this haven't loved it as much as me. But this is still a five star read for me. And that's all that matters in this video. So I did have some books that I'm bumping down. But for the most part, I'm really, really happy that my five star reads truly feel like long term, all time favorite books. These are the books that did not make the cut. So five did not make it. They're all getting bumped down to four stars. And two of those were like comic graphic novels. Um, and all of these are definitely good books. Highly recommend you check them out. They're still my favorites. They're just not as like, oh my gosh, mind blowing. These are the best books of all time sort of thing. So that's all for today's video. Let me know if you like this concept, if you would like me to do it again. Um, I was thinking maybe I could do like my October, November, December ones and kind of see if I'm still staying on track 
back, although I think I'm really focusing in on really like my favorites of all time. I'm getting better and better at this whole rating thing. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're all having a lovely day or night, and I'll see you guys again in another video very soon. Bye, guys.